STV, votre télé. Je peux vous dire que la prison m'a fait du bien, c'est assez euh, masochiste de dire ça, mais il fallait que j'aille en prison. Révélation. Le général Douala me dit, tu vas être tué dans quelques minutes parce que on a demandé de ne pas te ramener vivant. Dénonciation. Les gens vont s'étonner ici que le président Bia ait des amis français parce qu'il sait que les Français ou les étrangers vont de temps en temps lui donner la réalité de l'information. Information. Vous avez avec le phénomène actuel de Boko Haram, le Nord quand même, qui va subir un impact. Je veux dire qu'en juin, on va lancer les, 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 les examens au Nord Cameroun alors qu'il n'y aura pas eu d'enseignement. On fait comment Entretien, c'est tous les jeudis à partir de 22h sur STV. Ce rendez-vous, culture, marché, astuces, santé et bonne humeur. Et on essaiera tout le long de ce programme de vous apporter euh, beaucoup de bonne humeur, beaucoup d'informations. On vous rappelle que c'est ça, euh, justement, l'émission Ce rendez-vous. Retrouvez toute la grande équipe pour plus de détails <rire> de lundi au vendredi, de 10h à 12h, en direct sur STV, votre télé. STV, votre télé. SDF National Chairman Nijon Frundi has officially announced his non-participation in the designational process for the party's choice ahead of the 2018 presidential election. He made the declaration this afternoon at the start of the party's convention in Bamenda. Just how, how was the news received by militants and sympathizers of the party? Find out in this newscast. Plus, political parties vying in for the March 25 senatorial elections have before midnight today, February 22, to submit list of their candidates to ELECAM. Report holds that ELECAM offices have been opened since morning, begging for potential candidates to come knocking at their service, but the turnout has been timid. Those are my top stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and thanks for joining me, Henry Wana, at the anchor in Douala. We'll begin this newscast in politics, whereby SDF militants and sympathizers have gone home satisfied with the outcome of day one of the SDF National Convention, as the national chairman of the party officially declined to lead the party to the 2018 presidential elections. He made his declaration this afternoon at the start of the ninth, eight, ninth ordinary national convention of the SDF party, to, which is taking place in Bameda, with over 1,508 delegates from all the 10 regions of the Republic taking part in the convention. Details with you, Love and Bear. The national chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nijan Frunzi, has told his supporters that he will not represent the SDF party in the upcoming presidential elections in Cameroon. He made this declaration at the 9th Ordinary National Convention of the Social Democratic Front that opens today in the Northwest region. I am not putting the flag down. I want to hand that flag to the person of your choice. The news got to SDF militants and sympathizers as a surprise, and to them, Nijan Frunzi is a leader to emulate. The national chairman is putting an example that other Cameroonians, good we Cameroonians, should copy the examples of the national chairman. I hope you know that the national chairman is still around somebody, something, yes. And our head of state is 80, 80, 85. So we should copy the examples of the national chairman and do so. One of the best. We can't fight for national president. We can't, we can't reproach him what we can do, we cannot do. This is the best news. Actually, I feel very, very impressed because that is the wish of our national chairman. And it's very helpful for us, Cameroonians. Other chairpersons from other parties 
them so that when you reach a certain age, you decline and give way to another person. The first day of the SDF National Convention was attended by over 1,508 delegates who came from all the 10 regions of the country with others expected to arrive in the days ahead. Present on day one of the SDF National Convention was one of its sister's party, the International Socialist Party, who came to wish the SDF party a wonderful convention and wish them luck in the upcoming elections. The governor of the Northwest region and representative of the U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon were also present on day one of the SDF National Convention. Other expectations in the SDF National Convention is the election of new members into the SDF National Executive Committee and a candidate to represent the SDF party in the upcoming presidential elections in Cameroon. We are now hooking up with a uh, Bamenda-based reporter, Ignatius Amabo, who is on the line from Bamenda, to give us just how was the one in that part of the country as far as uh, the ninth ordinary session of the convention of the Social Democratic Front unfolded today. Hello, Ignatius. Hello. Good evening, Good evening and welcome. Good evening. We want to find out from you just how was Bamenda today as far as uh, the ninth ordinary session of the National Convention of the Social Democratic Front unfolded. Thank you very much, Amabo Ignatius. I want to turn over to another militant of the Social Democratic Front. She is Animbu Muju. She, we are going to find out from her. She is joining us on the line from Bamenda. Just to find out from her, if at all it is necessary for Nijon Fundi to step down, saying he's not going into the presidential elections at this point in time when the party is in dire need of plenty of supporters and sympathizers. Madam Muju. You are joining us from Bamenda. You are part of you are part of those who convened in Bamenda today to discuss and to elaborate about upcoming elections. To your own point of view, do you think it's necessary for Nijon Fundi to say he's not going into the elections 2018? That is the presidential elections. Hello, Mojo. Madam Animbum Muju should be joining us on the line from Bamenda in a few seconds from now. Hello, Muju. Hello, 
हेलो हेलो मुजो well our technicians are making every attempt to enable us hook up with mudo who is uh, part of the uh, social democratic front party out there in bamenda to get her own point of view since she is into the house if at all it is necessary for nijon fundi to say he's not going in to the presidential elections he doesn't want to lead the sdf into the 2018 presidential elections once more we try to hook up with her mudo good evening and welcome Hello, Mujo. Hello. Good evening, madam, and welcome to Spectrum Television. Thank you so much. All right. I want to find out from you, to your own point of view, since you are into the house of the Social Democratic Front, do you actually think it is necessary for Nijon Fundi to decline, or to say, I should say, uh, to say that he's not going into the presidential elections? He doesn't want to lead the SDF into the 2018 presidential elections. Can you tell me again? I want to find out from you, your own point of view. Do you think it is necessary, or was it necessary for Nijon Fundi to say he is not going to lead the Social Democratic Front into the 2018 presidential elections? Well, I think the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front was very clear about it. He said that he is not going to lead the national chairman of the party, but he wants to give the presidential elections to a younger uh, in future generation. And he was very clear about it. He wants to, he actually said that he hopes that the children that he has delivered will be like the John Fundy that we all know. And how certain are you all that uh, a new personality is going to live up to expectation? Are we what? How certain are you all that the new personality who shall be elected probably by tomorrow, is going to live to expectation? No, uh, tomorrow is a few hours away. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is just wait and see. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Muju. Thank you so much. I hope I answered your questions. All right. We continue this newscast. This time around, we are going back to one of our lead stories to talk about elections Cameroon, whereby the regional delegation of ELECAM for the littoral region have expressed their readiness to receive documents from political parties vying for seats at the Senate, with midnight to today being the deadline for the deposition of documents. They said they will be working exceptionally today till midnight in order to get the documents that are still pending. John Paul Sama was at the Littoral Regional Delegation of Elecam Cameroon and brought back this report. With barely a few hours to the end of the collection of documents for the senatorial elections, the heat is on for parties who are yet to deposit theirs. On the part of the Littoral Regional Delegation of Elecam, their doors are open for collection. Effectivement, euh, aujourd'hui, la date limite de réception des dossiers de candidature. Et euh, je puis vous dire que... Euh, Today is the deadline day, and I can tell you that, as of now, from the four divisions that make up the littoral region, only Vouri has announced the political party, the ANDP, who are finalizing their documents, and while waiting for those who will choose to deposit theirs here candidature pour ceux euh, évidemment qui auront choisi de déposer dans les départements parce que ils ont la possibilité de déposer aussi à la direction générale. They have however put every measure in place to ensure that the process is a smooth one. Les dispositions effectivement ont été prises depuis la convocation du collège électoral. Vous savez dès la convocation du collège électoral, les délais commencent à courir. The dispositions have been in place since the convocation of the Electoral College because after that the clock starts ticking and things can take a different twist. But we did everything possible so that we can effectively handle the documents. But for today particularly, we might be walking up till midnight just for the reception of documents. Pour faire le nécessaire, pour que ces candidatures soient rapidement convoyées vers la direction générale. At the Elecam Regional Office here in Douala, the ANDP party was busy holding a working session with the party members in the presence of the party's national vice president supervising the process. 
Less than four hours to the deadline for political parties to submit the complete list of candidates vying for senatorial elections slated, slated for March 25 at the Lekam head office in Yaoundé earlier today. It was surprising to discover no file had arrived at the headquarters. What explanations were being given to you, Larineta Paje Abunga, when you went visiting? One expected to see an up and down movement of political party representatives along the corridors of elections Cameroon headquarters in Bastos, Yaoundé, this February 22nd, considering that the deadline to deposit complete files of senatorial candidates is few hours away, but it has not been the case. About few minutes after midday this Thursday, Elecom officials disclosed that no file for senatorial elections has reached the headquarters. However, at the regional level, the list of candidates of the NADP of Adamo Mustafa in the Diamari Division in the Far North region is first to have arrived. The SDF has also submitted its list of senatorial candidates in the Mifi Division in the West region and in the Vina Division in the Adamawa region. This is the office where complete files are being received in the Directorate General of Elecam, active in service. These personnel await the arrival of political parties which have been registered rare since morning. Yet, at the communication unit, monitoring of regional branches is frequently done through telephone calls and the use of social media like WhatsApp groups. At midnight, the Director General of Elections Cameroon, Abdullahi Babale, will give a press briefing to officially close the reception of files as well as a balance sheet of the process. Probably. He will also give statistics on the number of political parties that are going to take part in the senatorial elections come March 25th. Meantime, opposition political parties like the CPP of Kawala and CRM of Maurice Kamto are clear on their stance. They will not participate in the senatorial elections unless the electoral code is revised and ELECAM reorganized. The Director General of Elecam Cameroon, Abdullahi Babale, has provided most recent update on the preparation of senatorial elections. The list will be published in all 58 Elecam divisional branches on Friday, February 23. Yet now is an excerpt of the Director General prepared by Larnet Apaje Abungwa. At the Vina Division in Adamawa region, we receive documents from the SDF party. In the center, region, there is no document deposited at any of our 10 di divisional structure. In the east, Lom and Jerem division, we receive a document from SDF. In the far northern region, in the Diamare division, we receive a document from ANDP. In the littoral, no document is deposited yet. In the north, no document is deposited yet. In the Northwest, in the Mission Division, we received one document from UDP. In the West, MIFI Division, we received an, a document from the SDF party. That is the same in the FACO Division. And finally, in the FACO Division, we received also documents from ANDP. The party uh, dropped all their documents today. Uh, by uh, quarter to 12 midnight, we may have the whole situation in principle, and uh, at midnight sharp, this door will be, will, will, will be locked, not closed, but locked, and uh, there is no document which we can receive. The part of it is uh, really a long-going process. We started working... Uh, since we closed the doors after the previous elections in 2013. In fact, for the uh, uh, senatorial elections, we are ready. We are ready because we have all our electoral material uh, for the 81 polling stations, because we have 81 polling stations for the forthcoming senatorial elections. The materials are there. The CPDM is the only political party that has submitted a list of senatorial candidates across the national territory. One of the members of the Central Committee of the CPDM is Grigua Owuna. Let's have him react after depositing the list of the CPDM. Almost three hours here and a half. 
I think so. CPDM have 10 lists all around country. And we can note that in each list of CPDM, we have at least, I answered, at least two women. It's very important. To something else, the 2018 Judicial Year in Cameroon has been launched today at the Supreme Court in Yaoundé. Chief Justice Daniel Sonne, Supreme Court President, has challenged his peers to ensure the restoration of social peace, which has in recent times been affected by delinquents. Larineta Paja Bungwa completes the story for us from Yaoundé. In every contemporary democratic society, the objective of every magistrate or judge is to restore social peace that has been affected by delinquents. However, most delinquents are victims of circumstances which makes the legal concept of pardon very essential in criminal law. These are major highlights of the speech of the President of the Supreme Court, Chief Justice Daniel Mekobe Sone, as he opened the 2018 judicial year this Thursday in Yaoundé. Pardon or the forgiveness of a person who has been convicted of a crime is in three forms. General amnesty, which is the prerogative of the head of state. Nolo prosequa, which can be ordered by the, the courts during the investigation. And then of course, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the trial, if you are sentenced, clemency, the head of state has those prerogatives. During the launch of the 2017 judicial year, still on the 22nd of February, mob or jungle justice was presented as a threat to the essence of the rule of law. This year, reasons why pardon is necessary in criminal law rather than jungle justice or total condemnation has been emphasized. For the sake of peace, for the sake of order, for the sake of national harmony, it's more often than not advised to grant general amnesty in order because if you don't then you can't talk of state authority state authority oppress nowhere in the world when there's no peace the state authority only has its relevance and its place when there is peace the launch of the judicial year in cameroon is in accordance with article 33 sub 1 of Law 2006-0116 of 29 December 2006 on the organization and functioning of the Supreme Court. President Paul Beer has created a fifth military region to effective, effectively tackle threats from the secessionist group. The new military region headed by General Aga Robinson with headquarters in Bamenda is an offshoot from the second joint military region in Douala. John Posama tells us more. The President of the Republic has signed a presidential decree creating the fit inter-army military region in the Northwest. President Paul Beer signed directives reorganizing the country's defense forces, leading to the splitting into two of the former second military region, which is based in Douala. This new military region will be headed by General Aga Robinson Dong. This also comes with the appointment of General Esso Zhu, as commander of the fifth regional gendarmerie this appointment and the creation of the new military region are seen as a means of beefing up security in the crisis stricken northwest region which has for over a year now witnessed recurrent attacks by separatist forces tacked terrorists by the government with the killing of military officials and civilians as well as the burning down of schools leaving out tension that is in the region with the anglophone crisis general aga robinson dong is a graduate from the combined military academy emia from the 1984 batch and has served his fatherland in several posts of responsibility We now talk economy in this newscast, whereby three conventions worth a billion francs CFA have been sealed between the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development and the Cameroon Chamber of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Crafts. Darlene Fejo witnessed the signing, the signing ceremony and our report. These three conventions worth one billion CFA francs signed between the Ministry of Economy, Planning 
and Regional Development and the Cameroon Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Crafts are to enhance the leather processing unit in Marwa, in the far north region of the country. The Center of Arbitration of the Chamber of Commerce and the Pilot Incubation Center in Bonabewe, which empowers youths on agricultural production and the transformation of agricultural products. I just say that we have signed a treaty convention today on the first concern, the center of incubation of Douala, Bonabewe, where we are processing the cassava. And the second is the center of arbitration and mediation. And the third, is for the leader of Marwa, the processing of leader in Marwa. So we do thank the minister and we say that we are going to, to improve all our effort to bring out the success of all this we are going to do. The convention signed this 21st of February in Douala falls in line with measures to boost the private sector and enhance the country's economic resilience in the midst of economic crisis affecting the sub-region. And uh, uh, yesterday, we uh, began the discussions with the private sector. We took certain decisions, and uh, some of them are going to be implemented by a follow-up committee that will be settled. And uh, today, we continued with the Chamber of Commerce because uh, they have some good ideas in our point of view uh, as far as uh, we, can, we can include uh, the, uh, the, leather, the leather, for instance, the uh, uh, trans, uh, processing leather unit, uh, uh, cassava processing, and the chamber of uh, arbitration. And we think that those are very good initiatives taken by the chamber of commerce and the, uh, the government had to, to be beside uh, them so as to help them and to, to achieve uh, those objectives. The implementation of effective communication strategies to facilitate bank loans to private companies, notably small and medium-sized enterprises, the operationalization of the Agency for the Promotion of Exportation of Cameroonian Products and the Promotion of National Champions are some of the resolutions of a two-day meeting between the Minister of Economy Planning and Regional Development and private sector stakeholders in Douala to boost and fortify the country's economic output. Day two of this consultation meeting in Douala also witnessed the adoption of the Minipad private sector roadmap on how government can assist the private sector to remain more competitive in a challenging market environment. Take education in brief, whereby Professor Veronique Kabeyene Kamga recently appointed pioneer director of the Higher Teachers Training College, ENS Betwa, has been officially commissioned to her function by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Gandhari, Professor Yufei Chinje. ENS Betwa is expected to commence next academic year with 13 departments. The entrance examination into the prestigious institution has been launched already. In news out of Cameroon, U.S. President Donald Trump has met with American students, parents, and teachers who have witnessed some of the many school shootings that have taken place in the past two decades. The meeting went Wednesday afternoon at the White House focused on ways to make schools safe for students. Details with the VOA. President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, and Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos heard poignant testimonies from students who just a week ago lost friends, siblings, and teachers in the shooting at a high school in Parkland, Florida. I lost a best friend, who's practically a brother. And I'm here to use my voice because I know he can't. This is not just Parkland anymore. This is America. This is every student in every city. Parents who lost their children in various school shootings reminded the officials that there had been no improvements since the Columbine school massacre in 1999 and the one five years ago in Connecticut, where most of the victims were six- and seven-year-old children. Nineteen years ago, uh, <clears throat> I went through what some of the folks here are going through now because my beautiful daughter, Rachel, uh, was killed. And after Sandy Hook, they said, this, we wouldn't let this happen again, and yet it has continued to happen for five years. Participants demanded a combination of measures to stop the deadly trend, including better care of students' mental health, safety protocols for schools, and tougher gun controls. 
Some students praised Trump's move to ban devices that allow rifles to fire nearly as fast as machine guns. Comparisons were made with Israel and Australia, countries with tougher gun laws, and the United States, where a student pointed out it is easier for people under 21 to buy a gun than alcohol. While participants had different ideas on what needs to be done, they all urged Trump to use his power to make a change. Trump promised to consider all ideas to make schools safer, including some unpopular ones, such as arming teachers for a faster response to an attack. So we'll be doing the background checks, we'll be doing uh, a lot of different things, but we'll certainly be looking at ideas like that. Trump said he will meet with governors of all states next week to discuss the issue. Zlatica Hoke, VOA News, Washington. This 8 p.m. English newscast on Spectrum Television is ended. We thank you all for your kind attention. See you tomorrow. Good night. STV, votre télé.